cyberspace, Andy here with our 12th episode of the Liddell 7 show. Well, let's get to it. Would you trust an American journalist if his son was serving in Iraq? Ethan Bronner, Jerusalem bureau chief of the New York Times, has sparked a heated neutrality debate by reporting on Israel while his son voluntarily serves in the IDF. Check out this piece that ran on Al Jazeera English's popular show, The Listening Post. People seem to be waging a media war, and it's not against the content in the articles, but rather towards the people writing them. Tell us what you think. Our lead story this week is about a newspaper reporter. One reporter whose story was broken on a website traveled to the pages of his own paper and ignited a debate amongst not just its readers, but also its editors. The newspaper is the New York Times, and the reporter is Ethan Bronner. Bronner is a Jewish American. As the Times' Jerusalem bureau chief reporting on one of the biggest stories in the world, he holds one of the most prestigious jobs that print journalism has to offer. The story that broke, Bronner's American-born son has volunteered to join the Israeli army. Church and state mix into one big mess in England. The Christian ban on same-sex marriage makes it illegal for same-sex ceremonies to take place in any religious building. Even liberal Jews with willing rabbis can't hold gay weddings inside of reformed temples. An amendment to England's Equality Bill is hoping to change that. If it passes next month, same-sex couples will be able to set up their chuppahs in any building they want. Take a look at this post on Julicious. It's hard to imagine Seinfeld or Sex in the City taking place anywhere but New York. But some TV shows have been able to go from one culture to the next. Here's Ricky Gervais in a clip from the original Office, making fun of English office life. My proudest moment here wasn't when I increased profit by 17% or cut expenditure without losing a single member of staff. Uh, it was a young Greek guy, first job in the country, hardly spoke a word of English, but he came to me and he went, Mr. Brent, will you be the godfather to my child? So. Didn't happen in the end, we had to let him go, he was rubbish. And here's the US version portraying a uniquely American office experience. That was an overreaction. An Israeli version of the office is currently in the works. I hope it involves more than just a china sauce dripping on a laptop. Now here's a show that takes Israeli culture to the extreme. Eretz Ne'er Deret. The show spares no one. Take a look at this clip of an Israeli family deciding what to grab before a rocket hits. <laughs> People are a lot more complex than you'd think. Jean-Pierre Bader is the founding member of the cult band Army of Lovers. He's also an Algerian Jew who was born in France and grew up in Sweden, where he's a famous hairdresser and makeup artist. Liddell was fortunate enough to sit down with him to discuss his views on art, Jewish identity, and his own personal story. There is no way to, to, be, to be a homosexual and to be kosher. <laughs> I was born in France. Uh, but I grew up here in Sweden. My parents came to Sweden in 1771. I went to the Jewish school here in Stockholm, Beit Sefer Hillel. I remember once in Mea Sharim in Jerusalem, I was quite also shocked about the Orthodox people. They were walking in the streets praying and that, that, the intensity. And, and suddenly I realized that religion was definitely nothing for me. <laughs> recently pulled its latest application, a Benito Mussolini montage because of possible copyright infringement. Apple doesn't want a pesky lawsuit, but would they put up an application of Adolf Hitler if it had no copyright problem? Apple may be taking the lead in technology, yet their closed garden, we control everything policy is easy when you're simply dealing with computers and phones. But what happens when they start to call the shots on value-based editorial? 
Who's worse, Hitler or Mussolini? And why do they get to decide? I am very glad to be able to express my friendly feelings towards the American nation. Friendship with which Italy looks at the millions of citizens who from Alaska to Florida, from the Pacific to the Atlantic, live in the United States, is today deeply rooted in our heart. This feeling, created by mutual interests, so contributed to the preparation of an even brighter era in the life of both nations. Israel lodged a formal complaint after Spanish school children sent anti-Israel and anti-Semitic postcards to Ambassador Rafi Schotz. But if kids are that engaged in the Middle East to the point that they're sending postcards, why not take advantage of this and send them back some educational materials? Like fetch, carpe diem, I say. Read the articles and check out these six-year-old's letters drawn in red crayon. What would happen if two sons of a U.S. senator come to Israel with two very different dreams? That's the plot 28-year-old Matan Haral Fish came up with for his first feature film project. With a few award-winning shorts under his belt, he joins us now live to share the adventure of making his ideas appear on the silver screen. Matan, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So, your first feature film. Yeah. How is that journey working? It's, uh, it's really interesting. It's exciting. Um, we're still working on re uh, rewriting the script and getting it ready. But it's, it's, uh, it's very exciting. Your movie deals obviously with American and Israeli culture. For you, what's the main differences between the two and how is it seen in your film? Um, I think that first of all, in American culture, you can, um, because America is so big, uh, it's, it's a huge country, uh, you don't have to be influenced directly from many of the political situations that are going on. Right. And here in Israel, it's something that influences your life in a, um, straight away. It, it, everything that happens in Israel influences your life. You can't just build a little bubble and live in it. Um, so I think that's one of the main issues that, that I'm trying to show. Definitely. And what are your future projects besides this feature-length film? What are you working on at the moment? Um, well, now I'm working on a short film uh, that uh, is part of a project, an Israeli-Palestinian project. It's a project uh, that the University of Tel Aviv is uh, backing up. It's basically uh, they chose five uh, Jewish directors, Israeli-Jewish directors, mm -hmm. that finished in Tel Aviv University, and five uh, Arab directors, some of them are Arab-Israeli and some of them are Palestinian, two from Ramallah. And each one is making uh, a short film between 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Some of them documentary, some of them are uh, fictional. And uh, the motif between that all of them share is coffee, because that's okay. something that uh, Israelis and Palestinians right, it's and Arabs... between our cultures, for sure. To watch the full interview, please click on the link. And that was Matan Harel Fish. That's a wrap. We want to hear from you, so send us an email or log on to our website. We leave you now with info on the South by Southwest nine-day festival in Austin, Texas. It's a showcase of independent music, film, and technology, and Israel is definitely representing. Here's our Liddell favorite, Onili, playing on March 17th. Ciao for now. <laughs>